So this video is basically uh, discussing some early game tips for new players who are looking to get into TFT uh, in terms of early game, I would say early game to up until your second carousel. For me, typically, um, for example, in this instance, I went with my damage uh, carry. I would, uh, typically, I like to go maybe a wild comp, uh, at least two wild for the attack speed buff, especially because this patch, it got buffed from 10% to 12%. So basically, each time they perform a regular attack, they'll gain an additional 12% to their overall attack speed. Uh, I typically like Ari because of her ability, and I typically like to stack Rod into Jewel to gain, uh, I forget what the, the ability is called, as I'm a new player, um, to TFT, but I've played many other games that revolve around PvP. Um, like, for example, League of Legends and other MOBA games. So typically the way these uh, games are designed are around uh, the traditional sort of uh, traditional sort of D and D with tank roles. You can create uh, utility roles, healing roles, and of course you know damage. Whether you want um, magic damage carries, or if you want range damage carries with uh, physical damage, or people who rely a little bit more on their abilities, like you can see right here with Ari with her orb. Uh, she relies a lot on magic damage abilities, which is why I like going with Rod into tier because then you'll do the additional uh, splash damage and that ability will carry through uh, as it has a really good range. So she can sit in the back line and basically when she casts that orb, it basically hits everybody and deals additional damage. So that's a, that's a little tip of why I kind of like the wild comp. Other thing that I do enjoy using, especially early game, you kind of have to go with what the game is going to give you which is fine maybe you're only getting for example like knights early on in the beginning of the game um, but you always have maybe something that you're kind of a little bit more fond of and that's okay you can go with that um, just be mindful of that of what the game is giving you and sometimes you'll have to be flexible throughout the entirety of the game uh, maybe you won't maybe i won't get that fourth wild uh, but maybe I'll get a second brawler or maybe I'll get, for example, like a second um, guardian or I'll get for a, like someone who will give me a, a glacial buff. Sometimes having uh, that uh, that person to give me an additional buff might be better. And again, I say might be. It's not always the case. You really have to see on how the game is flowing for you. Something as a, as a new player that I typically like to do um, you can see right here, I'm using Warwick, uh, he's stage two, and I kind of using him as my front line. I don't have a knight, I don't have a brawn, um, I don't have a shen, um, and I typically like to use a brawn shen combo for my front line or my tankier players. Um, you can go double shen, uh, you could go a shen and a brawn. I typically don't like going double brawn um, because you have to invest too much into him to make him actually really useful. Uh, I would say to keep those things in mind, a nice tip to keep in mind, for example, if you're only getting, let's say, like you're getting tanks, um, and not tanks, knights, uh, I would say going to knight, if that's what the game is giving you, is really good, because the bonus that you get of the 15 uh, raw damage includes, of course, abilities. So if you're taking ability damage as well as just regular light attack damage, you're going to gain the 15 reduction, and early on, that is actually a big chunk of a lot of the damage that uh, the champions will do because each champion has, as you can see there, uh, base damage to them. And that 15 is really big early on in the game. So if you're not really getting the sort of tanks that you're looking for, going to night early on, I would say up until um, the first fight, depending upon what your opponent has, um, can actually be very useful. So going going to night, for example, like uh, going, uh, uh, a Garen, um, and maybe a Mor a Mordekaiser, or uh, maybe if you get a Poppy, if you get like a, a Gold Three Poppy, you can toss him in as your second knight. Poppy is a really good uh, example of someone who can maintain the front line, but you have to actually uh, you actually have to invest in him a little bit more than you do a Brawn, but he brings more damage to the table as well as utility with his stun. Um, I would always say, like, no matter what you're doing, um, you always still want to have, like I said before, the concept of the uh, the tank, the DPS, and then some form of utility, whether that's either healing. For example, um, I forget her name. Um, she has a healing component. 
to try to take advantage of that. For example, you could run two tier twos of her, place her on two different areas with attack speed so that when she transforms, she will heal herself as well as the lowest health ally. And so that's a way that you can actually build healing into your comp as well as, for example, going giant's belt um, into manatee will also give you the heal um, that when that person, whoever gets low, gets, I think it's um, when they get to, I think it is it 10% or 25% HP that they'll pop a heal and it'll be a huge AOE heal for your entire group. Of course, placement is important as, for example, if I had that on this build right, that I'm playing right now, uh, and if I had a brawn, I would put brawn right here just behind Warwick because Warwick would be the main tank. If I were to put it and I would put the healing component on him because he is more likely to take more damage than the Warwick, but the Warwick um, has too much HP to be beneficial to the entire group. He'll end up dying last more than likely and then no one will get the heal. So it's also important to keep in mind placement because maybe that's what you're having a problem with. It might not be who you're picking. It just might be where you're putting your characters. And so because you're fighting multiple opponents, because you're fighting up to nine, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. You're fighting eight other people. You're more than likely, everybody's gonna have a different comp. Some people might put two assassins over here and then stack to the right. Some people might stack in the middle or stack on the left or stack all on the right. Some people have, you know, people play differently. They have different comps that people use. Some people kind of use the cookie cutter comps that you'll see here, like in the, from the database. What I, what I would say is, um, go with what works for you. One thing I would say is to keep in mind when it comes to PVP, if you follow some more of these cookie cutter meta builds, the problem is, is that you become very predictable. And that's the last thing in PVP that you want to be is you want to be, you don't want to be predictable to your opponent because then I can just scroll down here and I can see what you're building and I'll just build to counter you which is typically how I build. I'm actually very new to the game. And so I didn't, um, I've actually been playing this for the past, uh, I'd say three days. This is actually my fourth day where I'm actually going to be playing later on today. Um, but I've been playing MMOs and PVP games for a long time. And that's typically how I've always played. What are you running? How do I counter you? Um, sometimes countering can be, I need to be a little bit more tanky. Maybe I'm already tanky, but I'm, I don't have the healing support that I need for my front line, for my back line to stay alive. Um, maybe my melee damage carry is getting blown up early on in the fight. Maybe I need to put a little bit more defensive on him, or maybe I need to throw a Shen right next to them so that Shen will proc his ability and he'll be able to get a little bit of damage reduction. Maybe somebody's having an assassin that keeps jumping into my back line and blowing up my either my, uh, my sorcerer or my other ranged DPS. So that I'll put in, for example, like a volley bear whose attacks, if I'm running, for example, two glaciers, his his attacks, his light attacks, will have a chance to stun him and hopefully give my um, characters enough time to then turn around and kill the assassin. So those are some of the com some of the early game tips that I would say is to keep in mind um, one what the concept of what you're trying to run. It it'll always be a front line, a mid line, and then a back line. It should always be a tanky tanky person in the front which could be for example a shen or it could be a shen or a brawn or it could be for example sometimes garen works okay but at the end of the day sometimes there's nothing that you can do in terms of the roles that you get that last um that last team that i just fought all four of his characters were level two i have one level actually excuse me i have two level twos and of course, that does make a difference. Sometimes people just get better roles. I've had early games where literally within the very first roll, I already get, you know, a stage two. And then I go through all the creeps. And by the time I get to this creep uh, round, I've already gotten like six buffs and I'm fighting someone else who has none. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about that except to try to limit the amount of HP that you lose early in the game. Sometimes... You have to decide, do I want to take a little bit more of an HP loss so that I sit a little bit lower um, in the ranking so that I can get maybe a, a, an item that I really need um, versus keeping st keeping myself at the top and really kind of dispositioning myself from everybody else. Whereas you can see that the difference between um, the bottom guy and the top is very big. It's very hard 
to come back from these because the roll is RNG, all right? And you have to keep that in mind. It's RNG for me at the top. It's also RNG for you at the bottom. But if you're already sitting in a good spot RNG wise and you're, you're gaining a lot of coin, it's less impactful for you in your re-rolls and it's actually more, um, I would say it's more beneficial for you to just sit on a stockpile of gold than for it is for someone who's sitting this low and basically being forced to utilize the rolls. That's something I wish that they would change. An easy mechanic that they can do to fix that would be if, for example, the guy who's low tier were to face a mid tier uh, or a mid ranking character and win, then he, of course, should gain more points than, for example, um, someone who is uh, just below him. That's one way that you can actually do it. Another catch up mechanic is also how you lose and how you win. If it goes down to the nitty gritty and you just barely win with one character on the on on the uh, on the board, you end up taking a lot less points from your opponent than, for example, if all of your characters were alive and you blew up all of his characters and he takes a huge chunk like that guy just did. He went from 57 uh, down to 45. So that's another thing um, to try to stem how much you're losing. Maybe you're not getting the utility that you need for your backline DPS. If all you're getting is things that will make your characters more tanky, then that's the route that you have to go and put that on your front line so that you can sustain a little bit longer in the fight so that you'll end up losing a lot less HP when you, and if you do take losses.